How many times have you heard myths that sound like they make sense, but if you really think about it, they don't? Like, if you swallow chewing gum, it'll stay in your body for seven years. Welcome to You Curious, and let's look at the top 10 myths that are totally debunked. Ten. If you swallow an apple seed and let it sit in your stomach, then eventually an apple tree will grow from inside your body. Well, seeds and pips literally can't grow inside your bodies. What happens is, if you swallow one, it will literally just pass through your digestive system, just like the chewing gum, in a matter of time. See, the thing is, seeds need nutrients, they need water, and they need time in order to grow. All your stomach has is acid. Nine. Albert Einstein was a terrible student. Where do you get that one from? What an odd thing to say. A lot of people seem to think that Albert Einstein, you know, genius, legend, style icon, actually wasn't very good at maths in school. Well, they're wrong. Einstein was a great student. However, he wasn't very good at French. And that might be where this argument comes from. He tried to get into Zurich Polytechnic School while he was still a teenager. He failed the entrance exam. He passed the mathematics section with flying colours but failed the language, botany, zoology sections, largely because the exam was written in French, which he couldn't speak very well at all. He still did quite well considering he was still studying in high school, and contrary to what you may have learned, he didn't learn to read late in life. He learned when he was quite young. 8. Bees shouldn't be able to fly. It's physically impossible. Sorry to break it to you guys, but in case you haven't noticed, bees fly. That's like half of what they do. They fly and they make honey. If you think of a bee as an aircraft with fixed properties, then there is some logic to this argument. The size of a bee's wings versus the size of its weight and its body should mean that the bee can't fly because in theory it can't generate enough lift to actually lift itself off the ground, let alone control its flight. However, the bee gets around this quite cleverly by flapping its wings really, really fast. This creates enough lift to get it up and about and scouting around for some tasty flowers. 7. Humans only use 10% of their brains. This is a total myth. It's true that not all of your brain is fully functional at all times, but that doesn't mean that it's not doing anything. Our brain is made of various zones, different departments that are all responsible and capable of doing different things. If you're sitting and watching a movie, for example, then the part of your brain that remembers song lyrics and the part of your brain that operates your major muscle groups basically go on standby since they're not needed. The human brain makes up about 3% of our body weight, but uses 20% of our total energy consumption. 6. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Now, lightning is an electrical discharge created by the friction of billions of ice particles bumping into each other inside clouds. This takes the form of what we know as a lightning bolt. Now, this process takes milliseconds, and this charge immediately reverberates back up to the cloud, so technically, Lightning is already striking twice. It's just going so fast that we can't see it. It's definitely more common for lightning to strike certain areas than others. The Empire State Building, for example, is struck by lightning between 20 and 25 times every year. 5. Too many sweets will give you a sugar rush. You might be familiar with the idea that if you feed kids too many sweets, they'll go crazy. They'll get hyperactive, get a sugar rush. If it's not true, where does this myth come from? Well, something worth considering is that sweets and cakes were often bestowed on special occasions in which children are already excited, or the sweets and cakes are seen as rewards which can lift their mood and lead to a change in their behaviour. 4. Cracking your knuckles leads to arthritis. This was tried and tested by Dr Donald Unger, who cracked the knuckles on only his left hand every day for 60 years. Neither hand developed arthritis. Cracking effort. The cracking in your knuckle is called crepitus, and crepitus comes from gas bubbles in the fluid surrounding your joints, which is called synovial fluid, being released. Crepitus is harmless, and it doesn't signal a health problem unless it's accompanied by swelling, irritability, or pain. 3. If you pick food up within a couple of seconds, then it's completely clean and completely safe to eat. Well, a scientist named Dr Cutler of the Queen Mary University of London conducted a study into this very idea. They found that all food dropped was contaminated in some way. Whether you pick it up within 5 seconds, 10 seconds or even immediately, all food was similarly contaminated. It's true, however, that the longer a piece of food stays on the floor, the more bacteria they will collect. 
So as much as we like to think that bacteria is patiently counting to five until it touches the food we drop, sorry guys, I'm afraid it's in a hurry. Two, the taste map of the tongue has been debunked. The human tongue does not experience taste as we once thought. This map suggests that the ability to taste sweet, salty, sour and bitter was confined to different areas of the tongue. The receptors that pick up tastes are actually distributed across the entire thing. The map comes from a 1901 paper by a German scientist named David P. Harnick. Harnick set out to measure the threshold for taste perception around the edges of the tongue by dropping stimuli corresponding to sweet, salty, sour, bitter in intervals around edges of the tongue. 1. If you urinate in a swimming pool, it will change colour. That's a lie. That's just a lie. Despite what you may have been told, urinating in a pool does not change the colour. The myth suggests that there is a chemical in swimming pools that will react somehow with urine, change the colour, catching and embarrassing anyone who dared to wee in the pool. Now, although the urine dye could be produced, it's not in use. The dye has been overlooked for several reasons. One such reason is that it wouldn't really benefit anyone. Children would likely see it as a challenge and public swimming pools would likely be covered in dye as children egged one another on. Also, the chemical could easily react with other chemicals, embarrassing otherwise innocent swimmers. Have you ever met a person who asks a lot of questions? Have you ever wanted to ask a question but refrained from asking it because maybe you thought it was too silly or even worse, too stupid to even ask? Well, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Some questions may sound silly at first, but do turn out to be real head scratchers like, what color is the mirror? Why do pirates wear an eye patch? Why is the sky blue? Why does Santa wear red? Interesting, right? You curious? Discover more. No more. What colour is the mirror? Mirror, mirror on the wall, what colour are you after all? From the bedroom to your bathroom or even at the side of your car, they are everywhere and they have one job to do, reflect. But have you ever wondered what is the colour of a mirror? Mirrors are nothing more than a soda lime silica glass substrate with a silver backing. Or, to put it in layman's terms, it is a silvery sheet of soda-lime glass, and this soda-lime mixture is actually what gives it its true colour, which is actually green. Yes, green. The humble mirror is nothing more than a greenish block of soda-lime with a shiny back. Why do pirates wear an eye patch? Ahoy, matey! What's with the eye patch? A missing eye, probably. Well, no. Pirates did not wear eye patches for a missing eye. Those trademark eye patches are not about missing eyes, instead to adapt better to see in the dark. That's right, pirates would often move above and below decks and by wearing an eye patch they would always have one eye dark adapted. While transitioning from a bright and well lit area to a dark, eyes take some time to adapt. But for our pirates with eye patches, their sight would be far better even in the darkness. It can take the normal human eye up to 30 minutes to adjust to the darkness. For pirates, those 30 minutes could be the difference between being left on the ocean floor and getting a jump on incoming opposing flags. From moonless nights and pitch dark times on the deck to moving below the deck, which is probably well lit, pirates had an advantage over normal beings with one eye ready for what may come. Aye, shiver me timbers. Why is the sky blue? Haven't you ever thought of this one, since you were probably a kid? Yes, why is the sky blue? A clear, cloudless daytime sky always seems blue. In simpler words, the light from the sun looks white, but it is really made up of all the colours of the rainbow. When a white light shines through a prism, which is an especially shaped crystal, the light is separated into all its colours. The light that you see is just one tiny bit of all the kinds of light energy beaming around the universe and around you. Light energy travels in waves. Some light waves are shorter, like the blue light, whereas the other light waves are longer. Now, the sunlight reaches Earth's atmosphere and is scattered in all directions by all the gases and particles in the air. And the blue light is scattered more than the other colours because it travels in the form of a shorter and smaller wave which is the most visible colour light wave for our eyes. This is why we see a blue sky most of the time. Why do camels have humps? 
A common answer to this question would be, camels store excess water in their humps. That would be a wrong answer. Scientists state that the oval-shaped blood cells, not the humps, contribute to the camel's endurance to dehydration. Camels store energy in the form of fat in their humps for the times when food sources get scarce. Whenever a desert dries out or a harsh winter kills the vegetation in the sandy desert, their only hope is the fat that they've stored in their humps. Also, camels have humps because it helps them to regulate their body temperature. What is awesome is some of the camels also have two humps. Pretty cool, right? Why are wedding rings worn on the fourth finger? Yes, why not on the thumb or your pinky finger? Why specifically the fourth finger, which is also known as the ring finger? Well, wedding rings have been used since Egyptian times and became popular all over the world since the 9th century. There was this belief that there was a vein that directly ran from the fourth finger to the heart. Therefore, it was the fourth finger which was chosen as the site for the rings of love. Why is Santa wearing red? Ho, ho, ho! You know you're hoping to listen to that when the holiday season is near. Santa is the most loved figure, but can you imagine him not wearing his famous red coat? Why doesn't Santa wear blue or pink or yellow? Why red? When it comes to why Santa is really red, historians have taken a look at the clothing of saints during the early centuries. Saint Nicholas lived during the fourth century, a time when their robes were red and white. Nicholas is thought to have worn red and white attire, which could possibly be one of the reasons why our modernized Father Christmas also wears those colors. 